In the Himba villages in northern Namibia, water is scarce and often has to be carried over long distances. Like other 1.2 billion people around the world, the Himbas have no access to clean, safe drinking water. But thanks to the ACP EU water facility programs, conditions are improving. This is a very sparsely populated area uh, with specific requirements if it comes to water supply and sanitation. People are also semi-nomadic, so it's not, all, not, not always the standard government uh, program which can address these kind of issues. So here we have an opportunity through additional funding or through the water facility to address specific water needs and sanitation needs of minority population in uh, Namibia. The project in Namibia is only one of 272 projects which have been supported by the ACP EU water facility between 2004 and 2012. This is a mechanism established by the European Union to co-finance water, hygiene, sanitation and water governance projects in the Africa, Caribbean and Pacific countries. Almost 40 million people in more than 50 countries have benefited from safe water supplies, improved sanitation and hygiene education. The program is made possible from 700 million from the European Union and a 12 million euro grant from the Spanish government. A key principle for the water facility is close cooperation with local organizations. In this case, the aim of the Namibian Red Cross project, which is co-funded by a grant from the water facility, is to improve health among the Himba and reduce common diseases such as diarrhea and cholera by providing access to safe drinking water and improved sanitation while promoting hygiene practices. All the years the Himba people learned to live with a little bit of water. So the water that they could have is only to, to, to drink and, and to cook food. So washing is not part of, of their culture. We only have to look here 200 meters from here, where there is a natural stream, uh, where also cattle is drinking. If you look at the water quality there, and that was the source of water uh, for people 10 years ago, um, it's dirty, it is uh, contaminated by uh, manure of uh, cattle. So uh, a, a water point which is providing safe drinking water is a great asset to, to the population. So far, 165 water points have been constructed. These simple and easy to maintain water points get their water through pipes from wells, like in this case, a bush pump placed on a concrete slab above an existing well. Each water point is managed by a local water committee. An important component of the project is to give the water committees the capacity to maintain and repair the water points and to handle the financial issues related to the water point. My wish is that the community will take more and more ownership and maybe after some years a Red Cross World won't be needed anymore. Safe water is essential for improving the health of the villagers, but efforts will be in vain if sanitation and personal hygiene are not improved. The Himba are among the 2.5 billion people worldwide who have no or very limited access to sanitation. So in order to reduce the transmission of diseases via human feces, the Red Cross has also set up simple latrines at schools and households in the Himba villages. Worldwide, more than 6 million people have benefited from similar projects financed by the water facility. Promoting and teaching hygiene helps the Himba to understand the link between sanitation, hygiene and health. We see that most of the people, or especially the children, are starting to wash their hands before they will eat or before they are handling food. 
Tena tu kina mano tuwe raja mo wikando kani mo kujia ya kana chakuria kake pendo kire kwe limpito. Maro mano mumba mumba wewe wewe mano mbuina mukuru na tu chakambu wewe. Namibia is the driest country in sub-Saharan Africa and has no rivers carrying water all year round. And there are dramatic fluctuations in the precipitation. Either there is no rain at all or there is far too much. In the dry season, the water supply is too limited in the Kuvalai Atosha Basin. But in the rainy season, vast areas are flooded. We are walking here into an area which is already fairly well flooded with water coming from Angola. As the rainy season has already started, you can add a local rainfall. It has to find its way underneath the road in order to continue all the way to Etosha Pen. You can see that this flood situation is surpassing village level. You need to have a good integrated water resource management approach to manage your floods in the rainy season. Believe it or not, if we should be standing here in July, August, September, the dry season, you have only some water pools left for cattle drinking, but you need also to have access still to safe drinking water. And this is an approach, this integrated water resource management is funded by the water facility as a first test phase, and it will probably take about 10, 15 years for the government to fully establish this plan. In the Kuvalai Atosha Basin area, GIZ, the German International Cooperation, with support from the water facility, is trying to establish a stable supply of water. At the moment, almost 800,000 people, or almost 40% of the Namibian population, depend on this 40-year-old canal. The canal uh, is, is, is fragile in the sense that um, you have uh, only one canal system uh, 150 kilometers long. So any interruption in, in, in the canal affects the whole uh, water supply network. The canal is quite run down, but it still brings water from the source 150 kilometers further north in next door Angola. The water is purified for drinking, but demand keeps growing because the water is also used for irrigation, fish farming, and by local industry. So ensuring a steady flow of water is crucial for the society. The European Union felt that uh, the Tosha Kuvelai Basin uh, had a very specific uh, conditions that uh, made us um, want to work together with GIZ in order to manage the water system. First, it is a very densely populated area, about 20-30% of the Namibian population lives here. Secondly, it has a specific water problem because uh, while during some time of the year the drought is very severe, at other times of the year, the floods uh, will uh, fill the plains uh, in this area. So we, they needed some support regarding the, the management of water. One way of ensuring a more stable flow of water is to search for new sources. So an important part of the GIZ project is test drilling in search of alternative groundwater. The water facility can then finance infrastructure work and support good governance to new water source. We are still investigating, but the more we drill, the more water we do find, actually. So what we say is, if the canal breaks, um, the supply will only last for two weeks. Here we would have the chance to have a backup supply for emergency cases to supply all the people in the, in the northern area. But for the future, to have a sustainable and secure supply, you need to mix resources. That means you tap surface water, groundwater, and maybe rainwater harvesting. Water facility is not all about infrastructure. People should be informed and involved. Awareness campaigns and extending the capacity of the Water Point Committee and Basin Management Committees in Kuvalai Atosha is also important in order to develop local ownership of water resources and involvement in planning. Capacity building is very, very important for the stakeholders because then they will be able to manage uh, water resources in a sustainable and integrated way. So you need to give exposure to the stakeholder to see the uh, asset they have, the resources they have, and the vulnerability of the asset they have in the basin. Local involvement is the key to the success of all of the 272 projects implemented so far, 
including the three projects in Namibia. We consider that every euro we would invest into the Namibian water sector will yield as much as four euros to the Namibian economy. We consider that every euro we would invest into the sanitation sector will yield as much as nine euros into the Namibian economy. With both the support of GIZ and the support of the EU, um, definitely it's not going to be there forever. So they are supporting us to be able to stand on our own feet and be able to manage and facilitate the management of this resource by ourselves. So definitely that capacity is a key because if we don't have it, when these projects come to an end, then we are back to square one. In the long run, our, our objective is for Namibians to run the water sector.